So aside from graphs, functions given as equations is the most common way that we will come across them. So let's look at this function. g of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. One of the most common things you'll be asked to do is evaluate this function. The way that looks is g followed by a number in parentheses, or sometimes a letter as we'll see down here. What that means is, if you'll notice up here I have g and then an x, g of x. This is g of 3. So what I need to do is up here in this right side, this equation, I need to replace every x with 3 and do the calculation. So g of 3 means 3 squared, x squared, minus 5 times 3 plus 4. And then we're going to tidy that up so that we get 9 minus 15 plus 4 is that 13 minus 15, negative 2. g of negative 4, same thing, except now I'm going to replace the x with a negative 4. And I'm going to be careful with parentheses, especially when I evaluate at negative numbers. Minus 5 times x, x currently being played by the number negative 4, plus 4. And I will do those calculations. So negative 4 squared, the entire number gets squared. It all got substituted for the x, positive 16. Now I have a 5 times a negative 4, negative 20, minus negative 20. That's all going to become a plus 20, plus 4. So altogether, that looks like 40 for the answer. g of 0, these are nice. All of those terms that have zero have x's in them, those x's get replaced with zero, so those go away. So that answer is just a four. Now, if we're evaluating this at a letter, and this is just prepping you for something that comes next, g of b, every place I have an x, I replace it with a b. And after you do that, there's nothing more we can do. I can't do anything else to tidy that up. So that expression is the answer. Something else that you'll be asked to do is domain and range. So domain, this is a polynomial. All of my x's are raised to nice integer powers. The domain for polynomials is all real numbers. Uh, you can also use a symbol, a capital R with two lines, or in interval notation, it's parenthesis negative infinity to positive infinity. And for us, for now, when they ask about the range, these are all of the y values. This is a quadratic function, and its graph looks like how to graph, how to get an accurate graph of this. So for now, we'll say we need a graph to find. When we get to college algebra, you'll figure that one out. So, x and y intercepts. Last thing that you'll be asked to do, let's sneak that in there. So, x intercept, we know that the y value is 0. And so I go to my equation. y, g of x is a fancy name for y. So we place that with a 0. 0 equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. Quadratic x squared equation equals 0. We solve those by factoring. x minus 4 times x minus 1. So either x equals 4 or x equals 1. Now let's remember these are intercepts. These are the x-intercepts. So it crosses the x-axis at the point 4, 0 and to the point 1, 0. Those are my two x-intercepts. The y-intercept, we know that x equals 0. So to find that, I evaluate my function at 0. I replace all the x's with 0. We actually did that already, so I'll copy that down. So I know that my y-intercept is the point 0, 4. Now, if you're interested in getting a graph of this, I now have quite a bit of information. I know the basic shape, it's a parabola. I know my x-intercepts, it crosses the x-axis at 1, 0 and at 4, 0. And it crosses the y-axis at 0, 4. Now I'm not a great drawer when I have to hit points, 
But general idea looks something like this.